everybody. I'm Dave with Family RV, and today we're going to be doing a basic walkthrough on a 3250 Forest River Sunseeker. So let's get started. All right, the first step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to plug in your power cord, which is called a shore cord, to the RV. And that's going to be on the driver's side near the rear, and it's going to look like this. I'm going to simply take this end of the power plug twist it a little bit and then go ahead and turn this to tighten it on real nice and tight. Then we'll go ahead and take the other end of the power cord which is going to look like this which is a 30 amp and you're going to go ahead and plug it into your power source at your campground and always remember to turn the breakers on on the electrical. Now one way to know that you're getting power to the coach is go back into the coach take a look at the microwave make sure that the microwave is on that'll ensure that you're getting power. The next step is going to be to connect your water hose, which is also known as your city water connection. And that's going to be on the driver's side near the rear in this compartment right here. We're going to simply lift this up and we're going to take a look down over here to where our city water connection is going to be right here. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this end of the hose and we're going to screw it on this right here, nice and tight all the way. Now, once it's nice and tight, you can take the other end of the hose, which is going to have what's called a water pressure regulator. Make sure that this water pressure regulator is on this hose when you hook it up to the spigot at your campsite. This water pressure regulator will ensure that the coach is not getting too much pressure and it won't damage it. So you're going to take this, connect it to the spigot at your campsite, turn the water faucet on. Then you're going to want to go inside the coach and make sure that all the water faucets in the kitchen shower and the bathroom sink are all turned off to make sure that there's no water that will overflow in the sinks. Anytime you are dealing with your sewer hose, always make sure you have some latex gloves on. Okay. If you have full hookups, you're going to want to hook up your sewer hose next. And how that's going to work is you're going to grab your sewer hose like this. You're going to twist this cap off of here so you're able to stick your sewer hose through there. Next, you're going to make sure that the valves are closed. You're going to want to twist this cap off like so, take it off. Then you're going to want to take this end of the sewer hose and there'll be a couple little notches right here that you're going to lock this sewer hose into. And you're just going to twist it and lock it in like so. Then you're going to take the other end, which is going to be a 90 degree clear elbow, and you're going to want to stick that into the ground where the sewer connection is. Now the sewer connection is going to may at the campsite may have some threading, so you can take this off and you can thread it into the sewer hose and then connect this. This is going to ensure if you have to dump that the pressure won't lift this up. Okay. Now when you do hook up your sewer hose, you're always going to leave your black valve closed and your gray valve closed. You're not going to pull these until your sensors inside the coach read two thirds or full. So you're going to leave this closed. Pressure needs to build this up and pressure will push this down. Okay. So once you are full at two thirds, you'll go ahead and pull the black first. The waste will come out. After that, you'll go ahead and pull the gray valve next. And that gray water is going to help flush out the inside of this hose. So it's not all dirty. After that, after you're done dumping, you can hook up a water hose to your Santee flush. Uh, connection right here. So you hook up your water hose to this one where it says tank flush, not the sewer city water. Once you hook up your water hose to this, you're going to make sure this black valve is open. Then you're going to turn on the water faucet. And what this is going to do, it's going to go, the water is going to go inside the black tank and rinse out the bottom, leave it on for about five to 10 minutes or less than that. Uh, once you do that, you can actually close this black valve for a couple minutes, not too long. Once you close this black valve, your black tank is filling up. And what you want to do is fill it up to about one third. Once it's filled up to one third, you're going to pull it again and you're going to flush out that stuff. Once you're done, you're just going to go ahead and close it again. On your Sunseeker 3250, on the driver's side, next at the rear, next to your electrical, you're going to see this cap right here. Now, this cap is easily, you can twist it off like so. This is your fresh water fill. This is your fresh water tank. To fill this tank up, you're simply going to take your water hose 
stick it in right there, turn the water faucet on, and start filling up the tank. Now there is an overflow valve. Once that water starts coming out, that's going to tell you that your fresh water tank is full. Do not leave this unattended uh, while you're filling up. Make sure before you fill up your fresh water tank that your black and gray tanks are empty. You want to make sure that you have enough space for your fresh water to drain into. Now that we got our electrical sewer and water hose hooked up, the next step is we're going to open up the slides. And to open up the slides, we're going to one, turn the vehicle on, and then the second, we're going to put the parking brake down, and then third, we will push out the slides. So let's go do that. All right, so this is the ignition key, this guy right here. We're going to go ahead and start the vehicle. And this is the parking brake, which we're going to push down with our foot nice and gently. You don't have to do it too hard. And just for the future reference, this will be the way to release the brake. It will say brake release like that. But right now we're going to open up the slides. So we're going to push this guy back down, leave the vehicle running, and we're going to go push out the slides. So let's go inside the coach. All right. So in the 3250, when you walk into the entry door to the left, you're going to see the control panel. Okay. Right now we're just focused on the slide in and out. Okay. We're going to, there's two slides in the 3250 sun seeker. So right now we're going to push the first slide and the dinette. And all we're going to do is simply push the out button and hold it down. Remember, nobody should be sitting on the slide while you're pushing the slide in or out. And that's it. Next, we're going to go to the second slide because the 3250 has two slides, uh, one for the dinette and one for the bunk bed and the couch back here. So we're going to take a walk back here to the next slide out button, which is going to be back here next to the bathroom door. You're going to see slide out room. We're going to push the out button for the second slide. After the slides are open, we're going to go ahead and turn off the ignition and take the keys out. All right. Next, we're going to come focus back on the control panel over here. And we're going to go over some stuff of what it button is what. Uh, let's start right here. We're going to start with the generator. If you are dry camping, we do not recommend you dry camping. Uh, you do so. You do so at your own risk. We always recommend that you have full hookups wherever you go. But if you don't, and this is the generator to start and uh, turn off. The generator will power the TVs, the air conditioners, the microwaves, and any outlets that are in the coach. Unless you're on shore power, none of those things will work. You'll have to turn the generator on. To turn the generator on, you must first prime it. It's going to say stop and prime. You're going to push the button down, give it a couple seconds. After that, you're going to go ahead and release it. And then you're going to hold the start button down until the generator fully starts. All right, we've started the generator and we've heard the microwave beep. That means we're getting enough power. So we can now start using the microwave, the air conditioner, or any outlets in the TVs, okay? Next, we're going to talk about these buttons right here. We have an LPG, a battery, fresh, black, and gray. Your LPG is your liquid propane. That's how much propane you have filled in this tank. We're going to go ahead and push that button. And right here, you're going to see three lights light up. Now, this, this, this right here is telling us that we have two-thirds propane in our tank. Next, we're going to go to our battery, which is for your house battery. This is going to tell you if your batteries are charged good full or low okay so we're going to push that battery and right now it's telling us that our battery life is c which is charged or an f for full next is also our fresh which is our fresh water tank we're going to go ahead and push that button and all four lights are telling us that our water tank is full and next is going to be our black tank which is our toilet which is telling us our toilet tank which is the black tank is empty and our gray tank is also empty. So those are what those buttons right. tell you. Next, we're going to have a driver's side rear light on. So that's going to be a light for the outside when it's dark. If you have to go on to the driver's side, you can push that button on to get some light. Next is just follow these instructions right here. Kitchen light, living room light there. And there's various other different light switches throughout the coach to give you some light. They're just push button around the coach. Okay. Next, we have a water pump. Now, you're only going to use the water pump if you are not hooked up to city water on the external uh, tank. Your water pump needs to be on if you want to have water, take a shower, use the sink, 
that water pump is going to pump the water out of your fresh water tank, which we explained earlier in the video uh, how to fill up. So, and this is your fresh water tank level. So, water pump is only used to pump water when you are not hooked up to a city water connection. If you are hooked up to a city water connection, make sure your water pump is turned off. Now, next is your water heater. You have two options for your water heater. You have an electric water heater or you have a gas water heater. There's actually only one water heater, but these are the two different options. If you are connected to electrical at a campsite, you're going to want to use your electric water heater. And the reason is so you can save on your gas, which is your propane. If you are dry camping and you're not hooked up to electrical, you're going to use the gas side of the water heater and make sure your water pump is turned on if you're not connected to city, oh, city water. Uh, after, if you are dry camping, make sure that you turn everything off to conserve your power. All right, right here we have a windshield cover that's going to be located probably in one of the compartments or right here on top of your overcap bed. It's only got one strip of Velcro and there's a couple Velcro strips right here on the top bunk right here that allow you to put that curtain up so you can get a little bit more privacy at night. Next, we're gonna come focus over here on the stove, okay? This is your three burner stove top. You have to make sure that you open up the glass. Do not turn on the burners with the glass down. It will shatter the glass. Now, we're gonna turn these burners on. And to turn the burners on, you have three different knobs for three different burners, one, two, and three. To ignite the flame, you must turn this button on. Then you're gonna go to the knob and turn it to high, and you're gonna push the knob in to ignite it. Let's try that again on the second one. So we're gonna go, follow the arrow, we're gonna turn it to high, and we're gonna push the knob in to ignite it. Once you're not using the stove, go ahead and turn the button off. Make sure that you do not put the glass down until this grill is cooled down. All right, you have a jackknife bed that just simply pulls out like this. Pull it back like that, push it back in. You could push this down for some cup holders. Next, you have this dream dinette right here. You're simply gonna lift the cushions up right here, lift the cushion up right here, and we're gonna pull the tabletop up, and then you're gonna pull it towards you to release it from the wall. And with these two up right here, you're gonna set the table down on this lip right there, and then you're gonna use the uh, cushions as uh, the bed. After, when you're done, you're gonna lift it back up like so to the wall and you're going to lift it back up like this and you're going to set it down and it's going to hook back like that. You have one TV right here in the overcap and you have another one in the back by the bunks. Simply turn the TVs on just like your regular home TV and you can surf the channels on antenna or if you have park cable at the park you can surf the channels on uh, cable. However, these are not smart TVs. These are regular TVs. All right, we're on the second slide out with the bunk beds. The bunk beds, you can, if you need to sit down on the couch, you can put this bunk, the top bunk up and lock it into place right there, which will give you some headspace right here. Now, the bottom bunk bed is a jackknife couch, just like the one in the front of the coach. It's just jackknifes right down, and it lays down right there. We have off, fan on, that's just the fan only. And this is uh, the fan speed right here. Mode goes to cool high, cool auto. We're going to leave it on auto. You can furnace. We're going to scroll to furnace and make sure the fan is off. And then you can adjust the temperatures right here. All right, this is your bathroom right here. You got a couple switches, one's for the light and one's for the air vent fan. If you need to air out, you just simply twist this to open and close the vent. Remember to always close these vents when you start transporting. We do not want them open. They can fly off from the wind. Next is your shower head right here. Your shower head will have a on and off kind of thing right here to help you conserve your water. 
so your gray tank does not fill up so fast. And then you also have your toilet, which you flush right here with the pedal right here. You have an outlet right there. In your 3250 Sunseeker, your breakers and your fuses are going to be in the bedroom at the bottom of the bunk. You're going to simply push that right there. You're going to open this up and you'll see several breakers and fuses. Breakers and fuses are right here. All right, in the bedroom, you're going to notice there are several cabinets right here. These are some drawers and some closets. And right above the bed, you also have some more storage. Uh, to the window over here, you'll see that they have two red tabs right there. That is the emergency uh, window. Do not open that window unless it is emergency. All right, at the entry door near the steps, you're going to see a green and red. This is a battery. Your battery disconnect is always going to be on. Do not turn that off. If you turn that off, you'll get zero power to the coach. Next over here is a solar uh, panel right here that just does its own thing. Please do not touch that. You got a couple light switches right here. This is what those red buttons are. And then we have the uh, awning extend and retract, which we're going to do right now. All right, let's push out the awning. We're going to hold the extend button down and we're going to push the awning out. We're going to wait for the flap to come out. Once the flap comes down, that means you can go ahead and stop holding the extend button. Remember, the awning is not windproof. Do not have it out during windy conditions. Please be mindful of the, the wind. Use your good judgment. Bring it in if, it, if you feel like it's getting too windy. And don't leave it out unattended overnight. Always bring it back in. And here comes that flap. We're going to back it up a little bit. There's the flap. There you go. Always remember to bring the awning in before you move the coach. Just hold the retract button down and wait for it to stop by itself. All right, next we are going to close up the slide. So remember, we're going to turn the vehicle on and then we're going to go to the slide buttons and we're going to close them. All right, we're going to pull in the slide for the bunk beds that's in the back by the bathroom. We're just going to simply hold the in button until the slide stops by itself. Remember, nobody should be sitting on the slide. Well, it is moving. Next, we're going to go to the dining room over here. Go to the control panel at the entry door, and we're going to close up this slide. We're going to simply push in and hold that in until the slide stops. All right. Next, we're going to turn the vehicle off and take the keys out of the ignition. All right. We got about four keys on this coach right here. This is going to be the ignition key. This will be for uh, the two locks on your entry door. And this will be for your uh, safe. This is for a safe right here on the steps. A little safe right there where you could put all your valuables if you need to. And then the little small silver key will be for your outdoor storage locks over here. Speaking of storage locks, we're going to go through this real quick. Real quick. You have a propane uh, right there. That's your propane. You have a storage compartment right there. Another storage compartment right here storage compartment right here and one right here let's go over here to the other side always remember when you are departing your campsite make sure that you disconnect your electrical make sure you disconnect your sewer hose and put the cap on and make sure you disconnect your water hose store them in the proper places this is also another huge storage right here for your luggage or whatever you need right there okay all right, everybody, thank you for watching our instructional walkthrough on our 3250 Sunseeker. Always remember to check out our website for all your sales, rentals, and service needs at www.familyrv.com. We'll see you next time.